Okay. Today we have with us Tracy Austin. She is a Senior Associate Director of Career Readiness and Strategic Solutions here at the CCPD, and she is going to present today for us on the core competencies and why they are important. So you can take it away, Tracy. Thank you for having me, Heather, and thank you all for attending. Um, I'm happy to um, be able to share with you a little bit about core competencies, what they are, and why they matter, how they can help us as we enter into a hiring process. If you will, on your laptop or on your phone, please go to minty.com and use this code or use the QR code to get logged in. That will allow you to ask me questions through the platform. You'll also be able to see the slides directly on your device. And then I can get some questions from you as well. So I'll give you uh, just a little bit of time to get situated in Minty. The code for Minty will appear at the top of each slide. So if you happen to get bumped out, um, don't worry about it. Um, you'll be able to see the website and the um, the numerical code to be able to get entered. Give you just a little bit more time to get set up and then we'll get started. So like Heather mentioned, we're um, gonna talk with you a little bit today about core competencies. One of the things that I would like to do is be able to get some feedback from you. Um, so as you get logged into the system, I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. As you think about the Career Center and our mission, one of the things that we hope is to be able to prepare you for your goals for life after Clemson. So we wanna make sure that you're empowered to pursue those goals, that you're equipped. And so we do that through sessions like this and helping you find ways to grow in core competencies or your skills so that those will transfer into not just your first job, but for any role that you take after Clemson. So as we're getting started with Minty, let's test it out. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What is an aspect of your personality that adds the most value to any team? So maybe you're on a group project, maybe you're at a part-time job or an internship. What is something about you that brings value to any team? Okay, so we have some answers coming in. We have communication, being detail-oriented, leadership and decision-making, accountability and cooperation, being a hard worker, being conscientious. I like this uh, positivity and passion. Flexibility is a big one. Reliability, a charismatic nature to get along with folks, creativity, organized and self-discipline. So as we think about entering into a hiring process, it's really important to know what we bring to the table and make sure we're communicating that in our documents. It looks like we have a couple more here. We have adaptability, um, to make sure that everyone is on the same page. That is so helpful with communication. And let's see, uh, high expectations for yourself. Very good. And this is kind of giving you a look at how you can ask questions. So if something comes up along the way and you'd like to ask a question, please feel free to pop it there. Okay, uh, question number two. When do you plan to graduate? This will just give me an idea of the folks that are in the room, help me make sure that I'm tailoring examples to fit kind of where you are. Okay, so a little bit of a mixture, but um, primarily some folks who are looking to graduate um, within the next year. And so that'll help as we begin to think about what's next. Let's see what we have here. Some more um, upcoming grads coming up. And then on this slide, Tell me about some of the experiences that you've had since you started college. 
So on this particular slide, you can pick as many at, as um, are applicable. So just pop in um, which of these items are ones that you've had a chance to do so far. So we have um, a lot of folks who have done some part-time work, uh, volunteering in the community, maybe having a leadership role within a Clemson uh, club or organization, and then serving in a leadership role within a group project. And then we have another layer of folks that have had a chance to do some other activities like study abroad, student teaching, practicums, or even internships. I will say that um, my team works with our off campus campus internship program. If you happen to have an off-campus internship program for this summer, we do have a unique opportunity that the window is closing soon. We um, were able to um, secure some grant funds for students that have off-campus internships for summer 2024. If you go to our website and look at the internships page, you'll see a link there. Um, you will need to enroll in one of our off-campus internship courses, but there could be some funds coming your way within the next couple of weeks um, just to help you out with participating in that internship. So maybe you had to um, move for your internship, or maybe you have some additional expenses for like professional clothing. And so that um, just that those funds can be really helpful, but we are getting close to that deadline. We're running out of funds. So if you're already in an internship, please be sure to enroll in one of those courses. Okay, one more question. What do, what do you think employers want most when they look for a candidate? Okay, so employers are looking for candidates who are reliable, responsible, that they can communicate well, they can take leadership and be flexible, they have some soft, skill, soft skills, they have some experience, uh, they want someone who can help um, drive the organization through their passion, someone with integrity and can be efficient, uh, charisma, um, someone who can be a problem solver. I, I like that one a lot. I've had a uh, supervisor say, um, if you come to me with a problem, come to me with some ideas of how we can solve it. That's really helpful. One thing that I really like that I'm seeing here is that the things you're telling me that employers want are very, very similar to what you told me that you bring to the table whenever you're a part of a team. And so as we think about that, I want you to know um, that you're exactly right. These are the things that employers are looking for, and it seems like you have those things as well. So make sure that you um, are clear, and we're going to talk about how to do that today as you think about communicating um, with employers through your resume, cover letter, and interview. So here are a few more responses that we're getting in. So when we think about this phrase, core competencies, um, to me, it is a phrase that I don't really use in my normal life. I don't think about that word competencies, but when we think about what competencies are, sometimes you might think of them as being called soft skills or um, areas where we can engage and grow. And so our core competencies are listed in the black text um, below the orange headers. Those headers are just there to kind of help us group our competencies. But our competencies are communication, collabor collaboration, leadership. We want to see that um, folks can be adaptable. These are all the things that you were telling me that you have and that employers are looking for. And we've done a lot of research um, and actually lead the way in a lot of this conversation across the nation. And 
as we are doing this research, we're finding the same things that you know to be true, that they want folks who can think critically, who can have some self-awareness, act with integrity and ethics, um, work within their field, with the proper technology platforms. And then the last one that we have is brand. And this is really your reputation. So this is what do those who have worked with you think about you? And as we think about these competencies, it can be really easy. I don't know if any of you were like in Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts, but you kind of went through and you earned these badges and you checked them off a list. It can be easy to think about them that way, but I like to think about them as being um, an area where we can grow dimensionally and not linearly, and not in a linear fashion, because there are always new ways that we can grow and different roles, different positions that we play are going to calls us to grow in new ways through each one of these. So we may have a position where we have demonstrated a lot of technology within our particular field and we move into another role and see, oh, there's so much more to this world of where I can grow and learn. That really comes in with our core competency model of learn, act, flex, succeed. And through this process, we want to think about, we're going to learn, we're going to grow um, by practicing. And then as we practice, we're going to take a step back and reflect and see where we can flex, where we can kind of tweak and try again. And through that process, that's actually how we develop success. So this word competency is really that place where our knowledge, our attitude and behaviors and our skills intersect. So there might be some things that um, we know what we need to do, but we have not quite put the behaviors in place. So I might say I want to live a healthy lifestyle, but if I'm not taking time to be um, moving each day and eating right, then I might have the knowledge, but I might not have the behavior or the skill that's developed in order to be truly proficient. So this is where we have, uh, where we think about what does the competency mean and, and how do we know if we're there? One reason that the competencies are so important is as we look at what's trending and the way that people are working, the average person will have 15 jobs in their lifetime. And when we think about how that's different from how it used to be, my grandparents would um, have training and then would enter into a role and maybe stay in that role for a really long time. And the, and the, May, the most movement that they would see would maybe be the supervisor of that role. But essentially, they're staying in the same place for a long time. And the world is a lot different. Work is a lot different now with moving from um, so many different jobs with the opportunity of maybe having to relocate or work on either time or project-based contracts where I'm assigned to this particular project. And then at the end of that project, I need to find a new employer. Or at the end of that six month period, I need to find a new employer. All of those things are um, really having us depend on our competency development. And what we see is if we can demonstrate leadership in our group project and our classroom, then we have some experience that's going to transfer into our role in our internship or our role in our part time, part time or full time job. So as we think about the hiring process, we think about that resume. The goal of that resume is to secure an interview. And the goal of that interview is to secure an offer. And once we have that offer, we're going to continue to develop professionally. So we still have goals. We still have things that we're trying to achieve. And in each of these stages, we want to make sure that we're constantly introducing our professional self, that we're highlighting our education and our experience, that we're very clearly communicating or articulating how our training and experience transfers into this particular role. So even whenever you have that full-time job or you're um, kind of working in a role for a while, you may have an opportunity to work on a particular type of project. And if you can communicate to the group and your supervisor how your training and experience has equipped you to help lead a project or um, work on a committee or a task force, then that can give you then more and more opportunities. 
So let's dig into some of our competencies. The first one we're going to discuss today is communication. And when we think about communication, a lot of times what comes to mind is maybe a session like this where you have to present. And so we think about how we are speaking, but I want you to think about communication in more than just a speaking way. A lot of communication or really good communication has to deal with listening. It also has to do with how we're showing engagement. So think about your nonverbal cues. It can be um, really distracting for a presenter if the verbal cues are the nonverbal cues are off. One time, whenever I was uh, whenever I was an undergrad, I was going to school to be a teacher, and I was in my student teaching experience, and I was teaching away, and I kept looking at my cooperating teacher, and she was just jotting down all these notes. And I just was so terrified that I was doing a bad job and I talked to her about it afterwards. And it turned out that what she had been writing was actually her grocery list. So sometimes those nonverbal cues can, can miscommunicate for us on accident. We wanna think about communication and making sure that we are communicating appropriately for the particular audience that we're working with. So um, one of the things that I ask you at the beginning is, what level are you? What uh, year level are you? What are your experiences? And that helps me make sure that I'm gearing my um, presentation and examples to match the type of experiences that you've probably had a chance to have. We're not going to go into a college level course and talk about career development in the same way that we're going to talk about it with elementary students. It's going to look different. So we want to make sure that we are adjusting for that audience. Another important part of communication is making sure that we're prepared for the questions or the concerns that our audience may have. And so as we um, think about what this might look like in work, we want to prepare for our meetings and think about the uh, folks that are going to be there and how our work might intersect so that I can come with relevant material and resources to be able to hand off to them. Another example that I like to give is if I want to go to a conference and I want to ask my boss if it's okay if I go, if I send him an email and say, hey, can I go to this conference? There are going to be like a series of questions that he's going to have. How much does it cost? When is it? Why do you want to go? But if I can lead with, hi, I'd like to go to this conference. It's going to cost about $1,000. I would be out of the office this week. Uh, I think that going to this conference could be really helpful. I'm going to be able to bring back these particular elements to the team. Then all he has to do is look at that one email and it's not that like drip, drip back and forth. So as we're thinking about communication, we want to think about presentation, we want to think about the way we speak, but we also want to think about the way we listen, the way that we um, interact with our nonverbal cues, and the way that we are thinking critically about what we're sharing. A lot of you mentioned that employers are going to want to see folks who can collaborate well with others. And some of you mentioned that this is a skill that you bring to the table. When we think about collaboration, I think that uh, sometimes this can be phrased as networking or teamwork. We want to make sure that we are contributing to authentic relationships, that we are helping others like they are helping us. We also want to think about establishing a network of folks that can influence us that is across a spectrum. So we have folks who are in our particular field, but we want to add to that so that we can learn and grow from other thought leaders as well. When we're on a group project, we've probably all been a part of a project where someone is just kind of dominated and taken over when we're really utilizing that competency of collaboration, we're going to be encouraging others to contribute well. We're going to be seeking to learn from others. And then one component of collaboration that is al almost always present is how do we navigate conflict? A lot of times we're going to disagree on how the group should move forward or what's important, or there's going to be some other underlying factors there of, hey, I wanted to be the leader this time, but she got to be the leader. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. But how do we work through that conflict and make sure that the ultimate goals of the group are reached? How do we make sure that we're a good team member, that we're um, doing the things that we said we would do, that we're showing up when we said we would, that we're upholding our commitments? 
And then with leadership, I want you to think about leadership in two ways. One is that um, I want uh, you to think about growing your skill of leading people. How can I uh, find opportunities where I can uh, take the lead on a group project or or lead an initiative in my part-time job or in my internship? How can I uh, take the lead within my sorority or my fraternity on a particular project? But I also want you to think about leading projects. So leading people and leading projects. And with leading projects, sometimes that's about um, looking ahead a few weeks or months and thinking about where we want to be in the future and what are the steps along that particular timeline to get us where we need to go. How do I make sure that as an employee that I am managing my own work and my own projects, even if they're not group activity projects, but how am I staying on top of my own goals and making sure that we're hitting those little milestones along the way? With leadership, how do I make sure that I'm equipping others um, to participate, that I'm making sure that everyone has a chance to grow and learn from the experience and contribute and offer their perspective? One thing I do want you to think about with leadership is that sometimes uh, a lot of our titles have leadership in the role. And I want you to think about leadership as not being tied to a title. So even if you're not the group project leader, or even if you're not the training supervisor, I want you to think about ways that you can use um, prompting questions or make suggestions within your roles so that the work can, can continue and that the projects um, are met um, in terms of their scope and in terms of their timeline. So it's not unique to a particular title or role. We can all demonstrate leadership. I want you to think a little bit about your past experience. So you told me about some things that you've been involved in in the past. And I want you to think about a time where you really felt heard, supported, and valued. And as you're thinking about that uh, particular moment, I want you to think about what challenge, unpack that moment a little bit. What challenge were you facing? Who was there? Who allowed you to feel um, supported? And how did you move through that project as a result of feeling supported by them? So think about a time where you really felt heard, supported, and valued, and then think about who allowed you to feel that way. So maybe pop in on Minty just a quick, um, I know we can't get into all those, we can't answer all those questions that I ask you. I just want you to think about some of those, but maybe share with us just an example of how you've demonstrated proficiency in communication, collaboration, or leadership. Maybe um, maybe you were in a part-time role and you hired some new folks and um, you had to do some training. Um, maybe there was a project in a club or an organization where you said, hey, I will um, step out and I'll reach out to see if we can find speakers for our meetings. Okay, let's see what you have to say. Um, okay, I like this one of always being able to ask questions um, that can help. Um, with communication, collaboration, and leadership. It can keep us all on the same page and uh, clear up any confusion. I also like this one of setting up a meeting with your boss through your internship. Hey, taking that initiative and not waiting on them to set the meeting is really helpful. It shows them that you care and it uh, shows them that you're eager to um, tackle the projects on your list taking initiative in a group project, taking the lead, facilitated communication to make sure you stay on top of goals. Um, you were able to work with a team to present, that's great. One thing that we that we encourage folks to do, and if, you, uh, when, if you're participating in the uh, professional uh, development certificate program, you'll have an opportunity to meet with a counselor. And a lot of the things that we talk about are 
building a bank of experiences. And so this exercise will help you as you enter into an interview setting where you can talk about the time that um, you helped your co coworkers navigate through that conflict. So this would be a great example of something that you could share in an interview setting of how you did that. Okay, let's keep going. Our next competency that we're gonna discuss is adaptability. And this one is one where we always think we're adaptable until it's time to be adaptable. And then it's just not so much fun. It's always easier if someone else is adaptable rather than me. But when we think about adaptability, we wanna make sure that we are considering new approaches, that we recognize that not everyone is gonna end up in the same place the same way. We wanna make sure that we're constantly trying to enhance our skills and we're anticipating changes within our field. How can we recognize as an individual that experiencing challenge and maybe even failure is a part of the learning process? We talked about that career uh, competency model of learn, act, flex, succeed. How can I um, try and then think about, hey, this could have been a little bit better I think I could have done this a little bit differently and it would have solved this problem and not being too derailed by the little things that didn't go quite right. With analytical skills, this is one that I think we know is important, but sometimes it's hard to see because it, it happens in our mind where you aren't able to see the action. But when we think about thinking critically, we're going to make sure that we're um, examining um, a lot of information to solve a problem, that we are going to think about all the options before we make a recommendation. If you're going through and you're um, someone mentioned that they were training their coworkers on that previous slide. And if you're going through that process and you're training coworkers and you re recognize that there's a gap in that training, and what needs to happen, you could make a recommendation to your supervisor of, hey, we really need to let people know what to do if um, if we're trying to close and someone comes in and it, you know the customer is loud and rude, how do they handle that? We need to make sure we cover that in our training of new employees. With technology, we want to make sure that we're aware of the current tools and software that are a part of our role. We want to think about how we can troubleshoot before we ask for help. How can we try to solve some of our own problems? And that may be through um, that may be through good old fashioned Google, or it may be through looking through different help centers within that particular platform. A lot of things you can also find on YouTube and folks will show you how they have found easier ways to tackle certain challenges as well. How can we serve as a resource for others in this particular area where we're constantly willing to share ideas and approaches that make our lives easier, make it easier to do the real work involved with our roles? Okay, so think about a time where you face a challenge I want you to think about some steps that you took to move through that challenge and how did you make those decisions? Maybe how did you adjust or reframe what your goal or your plans were? So how have you demonstrated proficiency in adaptability, anal analytical skills or critical thinking or technology? While you're typing, I'll, I'll kind of share an example. Whenever I was growing up, my dad was a teacher and I wanted to be a teacher. That was really all I kind of had my mind set on. And so I went to school and I, and I became a teacher and I enjoyed so much of it. But there was a lot of it that felt uh, really draining. And I had around 130 students a day that I interacted with. And as an introvert, that was kind of a lot. And so I began to think about other ways that I could serve students that were not in teaching. But as I was exploring options, I just felt like a huge failure for this not working. And as I began to do um, some more exploration work, what I began to think about was I had this very narrow goal of being a teacher. And what I began to see was that my passion was really in serving students. And so if I reframed my success 
from being a teacher to being able to serve students that opened up thousands of opportunities where I could do that. And so as you're thinking about your goals or you're thinking about certain options, maybe there's a particular company or organization that you really want to work with, or maybe there's a particular title or position that you want to hold. And I would just encourage you to expand that view a little bit so that you have a, a broader path towards success. Okay, so let's see what your examples are. Okay, I like this one about helping father and grandfather with technical problems. And I like how you say that sometimes you didn't know how to fix it, but you tried. And through that problem solving, through um, that critical thinking, and through maybe working with some technology, you were probably learning some things along the way yourself. Microsoft Excel um, and being able to solve some problems there, solve extra training, uh, not being afraid to start over um, with um, adaptability that is huge. I like this, how you told your supervisor that you needed to make adjustments. So this is critical thinking, this is adaptability, and this is technology all in one example. So a great example to share in a future interview setting. Definitely continue to be open to those uh, different methods and approaches and exploring new options. It will allow you to have more tools in your toolkit. And you're going to know that some tools are not the right tool for the right moment, but you'll have them available whenever you need them. Okay, we're going to get into our last set. So with self-awareness, we want to make sure that we are being reflective, that we're taking op opportunities um, throughout our work to reflect on how we've grown and where we still want to grow more. If you're um, thinking about a part-time role, an internship, maybe you're um, getting involved with a student club or organization or volunteering in the next couple of months, before that opportunity begins, sit down and you don't even have to write it down, but even just in your mind, think about like, what are some things I haven't had a chance to do yet that I really want to do next? Um, and what are, and then at the end of that experience, you can sit back and say, okay, I wanted a chance to learn more about how budgets work. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. I, I didn't, it just didn't fit with that particular opportunity. Maybe I can look for that and another opportunity. How can I reevaluate my goals or manage my own stress or emotion of, um, a certain situation? I can remember, um, in one of my roles, I, after teaching, I became a school counselor. And as a school counselor, we worked with student schedules. And we were thinking about our schedule distribution day. And I had an idea for how this day could work. And I felt like my idea, my new proposal was going to allow it to be a little bit more efficient and it be um, not quite so intense for a student and really help the student experience. So I thought about this idea for months. I typed up a proposal. I shared it with our building leadership. And this one person in the room um, just kind of had this blank expression. And the very first thoughts that came to my mind were like, she never likes my ideas. I don't know what's wrong with her. Why doesn't she ever like my ideas? And then there was just this little voice that said, Tracy, you've thought about this for four months she has had about four minutes to process what you're proposing, give her time. And it was just a really um, helpful moment for me to recognize um, how it might feel to others to receive something like that and to be okay if it if they need a little time, if they need a little. And so it was something where I had to kind of adjust, but I think that self-awareness helped me be able to make that adjustment. With self-awareness, we also want to work to make sure that we are uh, recognizing and overcoming our own bias. And so um, this can be something that slips in when we least expect it. One day, my husband had taken my daughter to the doctor the day before, and I was dropping her off at school. And I said, hey, how was the doctor appointment yesterday? What did he say? And she said, mom, it was a girl doctor, and you know that women can be doctors too. And she gave me a, a proper reprimand for thinking about it. And I uh, just kind of cringed as soon as I said it, because 
I knew that a doctor could be a woman, but it just didn't come out that way. And so sometimes there are things like that, that come out that we, they, we aren't aware of. And when we do become aware of them, we can try to do better. When we think about integrity and ethics, we want to think about how we can be present and prepared. So sometimes we're here, but we're not present mentally. And so how can we make sure that we're really in, in the moment, that we are prepared, that we have items that are ready for this particular meeting or conversation? We have resources that we can connect folks on. We've all been a part of that group project where someone has said they're going to do something and they don't show up with it. How can we make sure that we're being dependable, that we're going to have this high level of dedication to doing um, a good job with our work? So as we think about who we want to be paired up with, we're, we know that person that we don't want to be paired up with. And let's hope that other people aren't seeing that in us. They might say, hey, we could give it to Tracy. It's going to be done well, but it's going to be late. Or, or maybe we could give it to her, but I don't know if she's actually going to come through with it. So what is it that they're saying? And that really leads nicely into brand. Sometimes when we hear the word brand itself, it can sound like our logo with our initials. But really, when we think about brand in a professional setting, we're thinking about our reputation and what it's like to work with us. A common interview question that you will receive is, what do other people who work with you think or say about you? So be prepared to answer that question. And as you think about what they may say, or you can even ask them, and it can be something where you're able to gain even more self-awareness of what it's like to work with you so that you can make sure that you are acting in line with your values. Whenever I was a school counselor, um, we used to meet with every student and their parent to think about their career goals and courses that would connect to those career goals. At the end of those meetings, I would give students a survey and they would fill out this little survey and I would look at them at the end of the workday and kind of think about what they were telling me. And one day it, it had just been a couple of months of really intense work. There were a lot of things going on and then there were some personal things going on. But one day I pulled up the survey responses and there was one survey from a student who wrote, the counselor clearly wanted the meeting to end as fast as possible. And it just hit so hard because I knew with, it was an anonymous survey, but I knew exactly which student that was. And whenever I thought about that moment, I thought, I am not acting in alignment with my values. I want to be a better counselor than this. I want the student to think they're the only thing that's important to me at that moment. And so it was a good opportunity for me to regroup and let those other worries and concerns sit to the side during my meetings with students. So as I was able to think about that, that very next morning, I was able to approach the day with a different attitude. So we think about our brand. How are those other folks receiving us? And are is it the way that we hope that they will? What can we do to make sure that it is? Okay, so this is one that I like for folks to think about. Think about a time where something went really well. When you're like, you know what, that that was pretty awesome. And I did it. And I'm kind of excited that I was the one who did that. Or I was responsible for this being really, really good. Think about what distinguishes you from others. You told me a little bit about what you bring to the table earlier. When do you feel most like yourself when you're working on a project? And what are those people who have worked with you? What are they going to say about you? These are things that it's good to jot down and have notes about so that when you get into that interview, you can really showcase where you're bringing value to that team, where you're helping others move forward. Okay, so tell me about where you have demonstrated self-awareness, integrity, and ethics or brand.
We had a lot of folks who worked in part-time roles. Some of those roles you might be responsible for manning, uh, manning um, a register with money. There, um, You might um, have some responsibility there where you're having to demonstrate integrity. Maybe you've had a role where you've had to enforce a policy. Um, maybe you've worked as a camp counselor where you have had to um, make sure that um, your campers are following procedures and rules. So we have a couple of examples coming in. Being able to admit when you've done something wrong and look for solutions. This is so helpful. Um, knowing what is right and enforcing it. Keeping accountability, not shortcutting. I wasn't performing in the way I wanted, so I was able to set new, new goals and change uh, your performance, not taking the easy way out, um, staying true to who you are, even if others aren't. Oh, I like this one. Um, being engaged with what people are saying, whether it be in your outward responses or through nonverbal cues, that is part of your brand for sure. It also shows self-awareness where you can show that you're tracking. Being focused on the task at hand, asking for feedback, engaging in meaningful conversations, being honest when something went wrong, being aware of where what you do well and where you have gaps. Oh, I like this one. Um, thinking about um, someone, maybe they're not doing their role, but what factors could be influencing that? And in this particular case, they had a parent pass away. Not slacking off, but trust, uh, but putting your best foot forward. These are great examples, you guys. Okay, tell me a little bit about where you've seen yourself grow since you've been at Clemson, and I, I you should be able to hit more than one competency. Okay, thank you for letting me know. It looks like you can only choose one. So choose the one where you feel like you have grown the most. So I see a lot in leadership, collaboration, communication. Um, that's great. I wonder if analytical skills is low because it's hard to see. My guess is that if you have done a good job in some of these others, then you are thinking critically, maybe more than you know. And so if you're thinking about that moment where you had to make the recommendation for the training uh, to change in your role, or maybe where you had that re realization of, I'm not performing up to the standard I have for myself, that is your critical thinking. Those are your analytical skills coming through. When you think about making um, a, or helping someone solve a problem, that ability to be able to go through several options and discover which path you think is gonna be best, that's your analytical skills coming through as well. So that one's a little bit hard to see, but my guess is you are demonstrating it. Okay, so I know this one's a little bit hard to read. It's the same slide you had earlier. But this time, you're only going to be able to choose one option. And on this one, I want you to think about over the next couple of months, you're going to try to participate in one of these things in order to grow. What's something you can try to participate in in the next couple of months in order to grow um, in, um, deep in your competency development? Very good. So as you're thinking about these opportunities that you want to engage in over the next few months, think about what you really want to get out of them and how you can embrace that experience to make sure that you're growing in these ways that we know employers and graduate school committees are wanting to see your depth of experience in. 
Okay, I'm going to give you a chance to um, ask any questions. Heather, I don't know if you have anything else for the group. I don't have anything else. I will put my um, email in the chat for anyone who might be interested in participating who has not already finished their application process for the professional development certificate. So let me drop that in there. I think most everybody that's on the call is, but just in case, send me an email. Today would be the last day that I can um, forward you to the right person. And I'm going to pop the link for our experiential learning grant for internships. So if someone is involved in an internship for this summer and they want to enroll in the course, there's just a small um, course fee. It's not summer tuition. In case you want to enroll in that, we want to get your course enrollment today, if at all possible, to make sure that you, um, to make sure there's still funds available. And Tracy, they've asked if we can access these slides. Is this something we can post somewhere? Yeah, I'll be sure and save them as a PDF and send them to you. Thank you. So I don't have anything else. Um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them out of the chat for you. And the attendance will be marked in the webinar. We pull them through the Zoom site and we will actually have that posted for your um, attendance for the professional development certificate and the recording. I will have to find out where Maggie is placing it. In the past, we put it on our YouTube channel, but she may be adding it into Canvas. So I'll ask Maggie Erickson. She's, um, she's running the whole program this year, but I'll be glad to take a look at that and we will make an announcement. Thanks for asking. I don't have anything else. If y'all are no questions, you're welcome to hop off.